Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the True Blue Chat. Today we have a very, very special guest. We have Mr. Wild Ox, Mr. Wiley White, the man, man that created this whole Australian sales community. Now, if you want, if you know the RSA with Connor Healy, then you probably know Riley. And if you, there's a video about you know Riley's story and how he got to where he now, but today. I want to focus a bit more on what does it take, not the skill set, but the inner work or in your head to actually get to past 10k a month and go to the, all the bullshit of you know when you first get into sales. Now I feel like Riley's story, especially when he just finished Be Wash recent Obsession Box event, gonna be extremely valuable for you guys. So, but for the guys who don't know Riley, I will let him to give you a short and quick introduction just so you can get a feel of where he's from and where's where's he at right now so riley i appreciate the the, the kind, kind intro there buddy but, but um for those, those who don't know me i'm just, just your, your average bloke giving his best crack. crack i've been in sales for about 12 months now um uh, been a journey full of trials and tribulations ups and downs and yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing how this year turns out. out. Easy. And Riley, you done about, what, $17,000 just like a month back, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 At, at this point, point invested, invested primarily in sales education, education would be around 40000 40, 40, Australian. 40000 So, and obviously, we we'll know each other since December because two affinity sales. But before you told me, because I watched the RSA story that last year wasn't, it's basically your shit in the face, right? In your own world. Like, how, how was it those during those moments? Like, how did you feel? Like, what are the, the thought process? Like, the dot stuff that you tell yourself? Do you, any doubt, even in the journey? Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. I, I think, think one, one of the, the most <clears throat> important important milestones that I feel like every sales professional needs to overcome is that shit munching phase. Whether that lasts a month, whether that lasts a year, which it did in my case, just about, I feel like it's essential for your growth because during those times when things are terrible, it really helps you align with what you're really all doing it for. Because if you're not making money and you stick around for all of that, you start to find greater purpose within yourself to why, to why you're really doing it. And I know, I know it kind of sounds a bit like woo-woo, um, but like there's, there's three main, um, there's three main attributes that I feel like every sales professional does need or every, anyone in this kind of online money space. And this is taking the word straight out of Bill Walsh's mouth, but it, it's very important and it's a, a skill set it's the resilience and it's the, the self-belief and during the the shit munching phase when you do get your teeth kicked in things aren't going your way you feel like throwing in the towel which i have many many times but you still push through that builds unwavering self-resilience because you know like like i've been down to my last dollar mm -hmm. with the need to make sales to pay my rent mm -hmm. when i've been there and having gone through that shows you that like no matter really what happens, even if I lost my car enough for now, and I went back to making no money tomorrow, I can still bounce back from that because I've already done it. So that's why it's so important because you're gonna get a taste of it eventually in life and the sooner you get through that, the sooner you actually build that muscle. I'd rather, I'd rather go through that now then go through that in 10 years time and you know have more things on the line to lose mm, i see so just really constantly push into regardless of what happened right but then once you on the other side of the bridge then you know that you even if you go back to that bridge like the other pond you know how to get back to where you're right now right yeah but one, one thing that i want to you know, discover more. So during those time, right, obviously, because you told me you have to pay the mortgage, you have to, you know, 
there's so many payments that you have to pay off during those time, right? Especially even with a, you still purchase sales training program during those shit time. But like, what's that little thing that, like any type of exercise or anything? Because there's a lot of guys in that in stage right now. Anything that you can help them to like do on a daily basis to making sure that they don't fall off the track or like, you know, get affected by a family member or the friend telling them it's not going to work out. Yeah. yeah. Well, well it, it, it's, it's kind, kind of, of like this. this. And, and one of my mentors, Jack, um, he, he told me this a, a little while ago. ago. And, and it's, it's when you're on a sales call, call <clears throat> rather than selling to what someone needs, you want to sell to what they think they want. Right, and, and the, the reason, reason being is that what they think they want is a little bit of a gray area, right? Mm-hmm. And that can be influenced, that can be persuaded, however you want to, because, because there's no difference between persuasion and manipulation. The only difference is your intention behind it. And if I persuade someone who's obese to purchase a, a weight loss program, it's going to better their health and better their future. You can make your own judgment on whether or not you feel like that is um, ethical or not. I believe it is. Mm-hmm. I believe that well, the things that I sell do help people. But this touches back on the point that to be able to do that, you need to have some sort of hypnosis in about the way you speak, the way you present yourself. And you will never be able to do that to somebody else if you can't actually do it yourself. Mm-hmm. So what I would tell people to do on a daily basis if you want to kind of build that muscle of, of self-belief is you need to hypnotize yourself. You need to tell yourself that no matter what happens, I'm just going to figure it out. Because what's the, what, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is you lose everything, you start back from ground zero. Like minutes at the shop is five ten dollars You can go rent out an office studio with... with Wi-Fi and electricity for a couple of hundred bucks a month. Go to a public shower. Like, you can, anyone can kind of rebuild from the worst case scenario. You can move back your parents, like, they probably won't even get that extreme. So, when you, what you really want to do is you just want to find the worst case scenario, accept that and be okay with that, that if that is the worst case, I'll make my way out of that. And then, like, once you've accepted the worst case, the chances, the chances of the worst case happening are, are pretty much zero. Mm-hmm. So that should give you a lot of a lot of peace in what you're doing. And as long as you're putting in the right inputs every day, as long as you're you're taking calls, you're doing revenue generating activities, you're reaching out to people, making friendships in the space. It, it's very hard to lose. I've never. It, it's a very well known saying. And I feel like it's very true. I've never met anybody in my life who's went 100 percent all in on something and lost. Mm-hmm. So, so just back, back yourself because at the end of the day when, when people don't believe in you and people tell you you're crazy like, like they did when I first got in this space you know when, when I joined sales you know, I, I know I've built a, a community now and there's a lot of people in there but I, I didn't know on one hand the amount of Australians in this space so I didn't really have anybody to kind of leverage off or learn from their, their mistakes or learn from their experiences and when no one believes in you and you still believe in yourself, once you do crack it, then everyone will believe and then it will all be worth it. Mm. You just need to think about that satisfying moment when the, when the tables do turn because they will. They will eventually. This is actually like very similar to one of the topic on Twitter recently. It's one of the guy asked, what is one attribute of high IQ? And Brody Force say it's actually relentless, like determination. Like if you fail ninety nine of the time, people call you stupid. But then if you make it on a hundred percent, they say you are a very persistent genius, right? So it's similar to what you say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I agree with that. that. No, I see. But then, so for this year, right? So we understand. You push through all that effort, you push through that bad time, and now you got a really good role in the Australian company recently, right? So, because it's you've been performing, not, 
I'm not saying you perform performing really badly, but this role you really at sea, and at sell, and make the money that you know, the marketing say you should be making. So I'm just curious, like does, when you get to that stage for the last three four months, do you feel any style of uh, imposter syndrome? Do you feel like you don't deserve this? Do you feel like you do way better than you expected? Like how do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely. definitely. I remember after I filmed that video with Connor, mm -hmm. I got bad imposter syndrome for a few weeks, like, like really bad. bad, because like the thing is, is once you actually put it out there, you film yourself, put yourself out on, on show to be judged, but to be criticized by other people, which doesn't matter. People can criticize you all they want. People can judge you. All they want, because regardless of whether or not you you put yourself out there or not, you're still being judged by everybody on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So once you come to the fact that no matter what I do, people are still going to point fingers and laugh. Why not just put goodwill out there? Why not show your best self? Because like, who cares? I don't care about the opinions of people who aren't where I want to be regardless. Um, but that imposter syndrome was definitely real. Um, <clears throat> And, and I, I think, think one of the things, things is because you're almost switching into a new identity. Mm -hmm. Because for the people listening who aren't making the money that they want to make yet, you will become a different person once you do make that money. You have to become a different person to actually make that type of money. Same thing you do in your sales calls, like it all relates back. Like you guys. A lot of people say all these words, they say all these reframes, they, they help other people do it, but they can't do it within themselves. So it's inauthentic. So, like the new, the, the current version of yourself is slowly dying every day. You're becoming a new person. You're becoming the new person on top of the mountain. So the sooner you can do the inputs of that person, you're just going to expedite that whole process through and make it happen so much sooner. Um, but that can, be, that can be tough for a lot of people. It, it change humans are intrinsically afraid of change we don't like it it, it feels it feels different we don't like different that's why home is like where you're at peace um but i would say like one of the one of the biggest benefits i've done recently is run yourself through a sales call mm -hmm. ask the sales questions to yourself in the mirror daily because like a lot of people do like affirmations and all these things, which are great. I, I do affirmations myself. But how many how many people do you feel like actually believe the affirmations that they're telling themselves? Like you tell me, how many people do you feel like actually point a lot believe it? So what's the point? What 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 is the point? This is where I come back to my first point. You need to self hypnotize yourself. Run yourself through a sales call. Start to actually understand where you want to go, the consequences of not doing anything and staying where you're at. Then you can contextualize everything. And once you can overcome yourself and become the person that you want to be, now you can help other people because you've already, you already know it in your heart. And that's going to give you more ammunition regardless. So it all ties back in with itself. I see. I see. So just really, you know, have to reframe yourself and actually be willing to get you know put away the past identity and step to the new one but it's, it's got it's uncomfortable right it's new it's like that um analogy that we usually say you only become the healthy person once you actually do this stuff right but, but one of the things that i often see in the sales community especially people who start now as a beginner is they afraid to apply for some position because they look at their mm. earning or they are closer one it with one or two year experience and usually a lot of guys you know scare themselves away from actually getting the opportunity but for you because yeah. why here is like from your experience you just apply you don't really care right so like what kind of advice you give to those guys that scared to apply for position I, I, I like, like that, that question. question. Is it these first negatives? I always say, yeah, go in, like, if, if they're asking for two years' experience, they're asking for, 
you know, there's, there's all, all these requirements, requirements around it, right? right? <clears throat> From a business owner's perspective, most of the time what they mean by that, they're trying to weed out those exact people that they're talking about that are scared to apply. They are scared to actually put themselves on show because they're not really, they, they have a lot of internal limiting beliefs that are going to come out on a sales call. So if you just put yourself out there, the, the, the positive is far outweigh the negatives. The negative is you get knocked back and don't get the job. The positive is you do get the job that you want and start making the money that you want. So I would say, just ruthlessly apply. Once you have them in front of you, show yourself, show your cards. Maybe sway the truth slightly. You know, maybe if you if you you know you've been cold calling for three months, you might say oh, I've been doing it for six months, and I've been. It, it makes not much difference whatsoever. They just want to see the person. They want to see who you are. A lot of businesses actually want someone who is fresh and who is green, because when someone doesn't have any any baggage pre from previous roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they can be impregnated with the way that they want you to sell. Mm -hmm. So it actually can be a good thing in that works in your favor. And what I would say is you want to put your sales skills on display on that call. Mm -hmm. You want to close the offer owner on you. Ask for the job at the end of the call. Would there be any reason that you would be opposed to hiring me right now? Get the get objection, the objection. Handle, handle the objection, like show them what you can do and they will respect that. You might not always show your way, but I feel like the sitting on the sidelines and just going, oh, I'm not good enough for this role, I'm not good enough, for this. that doesn't help anybody. They don't get a person and you don't get your role, so just get out there. And actually think about it, right? Because what you say, just sit on the sideline, is like not doing it and sit on the sideline and just watching it, it's actually not even the worst thing. Because you, your inability to even push a couple of burden, to put even your resume in, actually damage your psyche way more in your whole life aspect than anything else, even before you jump on a sales con. Correct. Because, because like, think about, like, like, like I was just saying, like, like I, said, I said, everything comes full circle. circle. The person that you need to become to execute, execute in that role, what would he do? Would, would, would he apply? If, mm -hmm. if the answer is yes, then apply. Slowly become that person that you want to be. Like, I, I don't understand it. Like, I used to apply for everything. I got knocked back on some jobs. Um, like, it is what it is, man. Like, I'm not dead. Nothing bad happened. You just move on to the next one. You'd rather live in an abundance of having six jobs interviews lined up than having one and really needing it hmm. which comes across and this is even apply to like modern sales but like then again live sales where you see uh, a, a medium looking guys but will really like a 10 out of 10 goes and you get and the guys who never you know bet on themselves they get mad at that guy because he t yeah. they think he don't yeah. deserve it where that guy, probably the guy who, you know, willing to take the big opportunity and willing to apply himself, right? So I think that's because people important. respect that. Mm -hmm. People respect a risk taker, intrinsically. Like we all watch the guys that jump off, jump off skyscrapers and do all this crazy stuff, get in the octagon and, you know, high risk, high reward activities. We all intrinsically respect it because a lot of people can't even imagine that, can't even fathom putting themselves out there and getting embarrassed. Mm. And there's that's that's that, that's but like that's why the game is like so so much. That's then now I want to change shift the topic into more something that we spoke recently on True Blue Sunday Con. By the way, guys, if you miss out on True Blue Sunday Con, you are missing out on a lot of costs that you pay three thousand dollars for. Because we have agency owner doing about fifty k a month in there, giving out free sauce. Okay, but one of the topic recently that we spoke on the Sunday True Blue Sales Con is what is the meaning and definition of sales way? Because you spoke recently, because you hear from a guy mm -hmm. sales not so much about you know telling people to do stuff. It's more about the energy transfer. Can you expand right. more on that yeah. for the guys that haven't know that concept? Because it's from a guy who done really well for himself. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah really hard. Yeah, yeah really hard. Done, done really well. And I went out for dinner, dinner with him. And like, like this, this is what I mean. I'm constantly evolving. evolving. Uh, I'm still a student of the game through and through. I'm not, I'm not by no means a master, but by no means an expert. I feel like you need to have a high self belief, which in turn will build confidence, which people will think you're egotistical, right? But I'm, I have a lot of humility. I know my faults. I know where I can improve. And I was talking with him. And he asked me straight, like, what, what is sales to you? And I said, man, it's, it's a way for me to make money. And he said, that's where you're going wrong. For me, sales is energy transfer. He said, when I go on a call, I have full intention of giving a piece of me to a piece of that person with nothing expected in return. And what ends up happening is when you go in with that mindset, which gives you complete detachment from the, from the sale, you end up making more money regardless, even though that's not your intention, because you're actually trying to help people, which is very important that you think of sales in a way of whatever you're selling can get, if you actually, this is the whole thing, you need to actually believe in what you're selling can get that person from point A to point B. And that is much more powerful than just wanting to fill up your own pockets, so to speak. And that's, I think that's exactly why you see a lot of guys in the B2B industry really laugh at the high ticket space simply because there's such a focus on PIF, pay and phone. Uh, because like it's come from an angle where you don't really have people, but more like I'm just here to collect your money and you know, take your cash with. Max sales came back to like that, you know, that stingy salesperson type archetype which is not really a good look for us because we want to make sure we are the good people that really truly help the people get over themselves, you know? Well, that's exactly right because like the whole thing with, with sales is that there is this obviously on, on money, Twitter and things like that, a bit of a circle jerk, you know, collecting money, which is all well and great, right? Um, but I think more importantly, it should be people focused, prospect, putting the prospect before your own uh, wants and needs, which can be very difficult when your own wants and needs aren't being met in your life. Like if you aren't making the money you want to make, and you aren't able to do the things you want to do, take your girlfriend out for a nice vacation and look after your, your, your mom and retire her, like it can be very difficult to kind of put the needs of others before your own. But all the greats have been able to do that really well. And it's, a, it's an internal battle that you need to overcome. Like, Salesmanship should be put in that light, it's, especially in Australia, it's really bad. Um, people kind of screw their face up, that the fact that you're a salesman. Mm -hmm. But like, I know my father-in-law, he, he sells uh, for a big chemical company. Um, and whenever he goes to America, they're pulling out the tables, uh, the chairs for him. They're, they're ordering him lunch. Yes, the salesman is here. Like we're, we're, they're looking forward to speaking with him because they know that he is there to solve a problem that's going to help their company grow and make them more money. So they see a salesman in a good light. He's there to actually help, which is it, it, I feel like is missing from, from my own experience in Australia at the moment. Okay. Too many people. Too many people are high ticket closers, but they're not sales professionals. Sales leader, as we watch, let's like say. Correct. So now, speaking about Shreya and sales, right? Just from your perspective and your own opinion, what do you feel like could be like in the next like five to ten years? What are the way that we, as a sales leader professional, can improve? You know the image and. You know, just really, what is a truly sales leader in Australia? And just the perception of sales in Australia. Well, I think, I think it comes down, down to doing the internal work, doing, doing the hard stuff, stuff, asking yourself the really difficult questions. <clears throat> things that you're holding in or things, things that you're hiding from other people. Overcome, overcome that. Learn how to lead yourself. Because in turn, then you're going to, going to know what questions to ask people to be able to lead that. So it's a, because you can never overcome an objection that you can't overcome within your own self. You know, if you're a guy that likes to think about things and 
take time, time between making, making critical decisions, you, you, you're, you're not going to be able to overcome that when someone else does. So it all starts at home, but it all starts with the, the gritty crap stuff that no one wants to do. But that's what's going to move the needle forward. Once you can lead yourself, then you can lead other people. Ask yourself, ask yourself this question. This question. Mm. If, if you jumped, jumped on a sales call and you were looking at yourself, would you want to be led by that person? Would you want that person, would you trust in that person to get you from where you are to where you want to go? The answer is no, you've got a lot of work to do, buddy. <laughs> mm. It's like the, the famous saying, you cannot change the world unless you change yourself first, right? Be yeah. small, baby. Exactly. But then, so, overall, because you spoke recently a lot about the Bill Wash event, you know? So, really, if you, people read, you know, your Twitter, your Facebook, they probably know what the thing that you learn. But what, what would you say is that one the thing that you, before, because before you went there, you told me that you have a bit of, of a slum, all right? Mm-hmm. Now, you came back, what do you feel like would be the biggest change that get you, no, really struck you to the moon. Because <clears throat> also your whole Dubai, Dublin was a whole crazy experience. No. Yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. I, I, I would, would say the, the biggest thing, thing that I've been, been able, able to implement, implement right away is just doubling down, down on, on, on what is important mm-hmm. and really finding that tangible North Star. What are you doing it for? Like, what are you making all this money for? Is it just to flex on other people? Because like to me, that doesn't interest me. I've never, I've never been the type of person that wants to just make money to, to brag or like, it's to set myself up for complete freedom. Like that, that's the whole reason I got in here when COVID all started, we seen the lockdowns happen and things like that in Australia. That really put a, um, <clears throat> Really put a rocket up Mars, and it just reminded me of all of all of that stuff, and just realizing what it actually takes to actually succeed, and what that means is it means going all in, and you need to go all in every single day. You can't just say today I'm all in, and then Friday you're you're spending time just scrolling on Facebook, wasting time procrastinating. It's a daily thing, and it's difficult. And sometimes you're not going to feel like it, but you got to just keep pushing through. Knowing that from where I am now to where I actually want to go is just a set, set, um, a set amount of sequences that I need to just hit right, and that's going to take me off to the moon. It's like it, on a sales course. I, I, I don't know how woo-woo I want to get here, but the whole free will question. I've always found that a very interesting one, especially since I got into sales, because... If people believe in free will, which I do, the thing is though is that like if you say the set, if you make the set uh, correct amount of words in a set structure, you can turn that person from not doing something into doing something, which is, which is mind blowing to me. Um, so that all comes down to knowing you need to find your north star. I found my north star again. Re- done some internal work and now all I need to do is just execute on those steps so they can get me there mm. so to recap basically to determine what you truly do it for and where do you want to go and after that just really lay it brick by brick because one of the favorite, favorite analogy that you say right you or you're here where you want to be just on the other side of the bridge Every single action that you take on a daily basis is really just build that bridge day by day, right? Yeah, ask yourself that one because it's very true. Because we are on the end of the today episode. So what I like to ask every single guest, because we like to do documentation style, where will the Wiles, Wiley Y be in three months time? Three months time. In three months' time, I'll definitely, definitely be hitting over 20k a month consistently. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I would really be starting to... <clears throat> but in, in three months' time... What, what are we now? We're in May. So we'd be looking at 
possibly a little relocation for a little bit. I know, I know Fatty, you, you'd be joining us in, in Kuala Lumpur. So that could be on the cards. I know I'm looking to head to Queenstown as well. I want to get... This trip really reminded me of, like, I hadn't been overseas since before COVID. Um, and this really reminded me that, like, I want to see the world. Uh, I feel like that's something very important. We have the luxury of being able to make money while doing so. Um, so I'll, I really do want to get out there. So ideally 20, 20k months and in some other country, uh, living it up, really living life. Like I don't just want to be a little dungeon dweller who's just like to get closer with a neck beard. <laughs> you want joy, Kino. Um, not actually you enjoy enjoying life. Yeah, 100%. By the way, we get Kino on, on the episode too, guys. So, yeah, yeah. So 20k a month, live in a different country for three, six months. No match style. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like I'm, I'm very, like, I'm a very homely person. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I do, do like having like a base, base somewhere where, where I can lock in. in. Like, like I, don't I don't like too many distractions. distractions. Um, I'm, I'm introverted, so I like my own company. Um, so, so it's, it's not going to be something that's going to be like nomad, globetrotting forever. But I do want to get out there and see some things that, you know, I've, I've had on the bucket list for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And there's no better time to do so if I'm, if I'm making the sort of money I want to make and, yeah, get out there and live a little. Tomorrow's never a promise. 100%. What's all that money for if you don't enjoy it, right? Exactly. So where can the people find you, Mr. Wyox? Um, so I'll be starting out my YouTube. Um, so that's a good place. Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, my Instagram. I'm not sure if you will link all this. I will link everything. My Twitter. Twitter is where I... If you, if you get offended easily, maybe don't look at me on Twitter. Um, and then obviously if you're Australian, um, living abroad, or you're a man in Australia, or, or lady as well. We have some women in, in the community. Uh, join True Blue Sales. Uh, that was started in, in October between me and a couple of friends that I eventually met over that year-long journey um and now it's evolved very quickly very rapidly uh, it's free we share lots of you know it's all the the relevant information in the space for many different people all in one spot you know you meet plenty of great people in there as well so there's no better place to be there you go guys mr wyox hopefully you got a lot of lesson and um, advice from this episode because once you get above 10k 20k a month the biggest thing that make the biggest change is yourself not any new trick or gimmick so today that's why we want to focus just on the inner work anyways guys any question any special person that you want to be featured on the episode link it below then anyways Riley just say bye to them See you guys. Um, one thing I'll leave you with, don't focus on tactics, focus on yourself. Make yourself better to help other people. Bam. See you guys.